I found a pencil tray inside of a desk inside of our old studio. Uh, and the pencil tray had this kind of curving inside of the rectangle that was, it seemed like hand carved and I couldn't quite tell how it was made. Uh, but in the center there was uh, something like a crosshair to kind of divide the structure. Um, and as soon as it kind of went from flat to being vertical and just kind of lifted onto the wall, I recognized that it kind of had this relationship to um, kind of canvas, stretcher, crossbars, but also to the crosshairs of a camera. Um, I painted over it, and I guess that was actually how it started, my interest in these inverted forms also, and tying it to the photographs. But the thing that was most intriguing to me was this kind of inverted curving that somehow related to the body to me. It wasn't just a rectangle, it was something that seemed like kind of a recess, but it was very small, so it kind of didn't relate to something on an actual bodily scale, um, at least like full-grown human scale. Um, but I think that kind of led me to think through both using found objects in my practice, which that one was cast three times um, and used in the first show that I did, but then I kind of used that curve exactly. I traced it and then started making other forms with that, um, some without the crosshairs, some with different ratios, but at a larger scale most generally to kind of relate more directly to a forearm being pressed into them or a thigh or a butt or a chest um, or a face with a single curve. So, but most all of them use that same curve. I tried the very first time to just make a rounded, you know, exact curve, but the traced curve just had something particular about it that was like just perfect. It felt a little more bodily. So when I first started working in ceramics, um, I was taught by William O'Brien. Bill, Bill O'Brien, and he talked about how related uh, ceramic working in clay is to drawing, because you can refine it, you can have it be messy, you can have it be just a draft, but it also very much is about the connection of like thought to hand and kind of physicalizing this like thought formation. It really feels like drawing to me because I can sketch out a form and it feels very related to some idea. So this is just the same kind of modeling foam that I use for most of them. Every now and then I'll do a wood one, but this is this stuff called Ren foam, um, and it's made for kind of architectural or proto like, did like a design prototyping. I use sand to do it, but it's creating this like kind of dotted texture. Um, but to me it always relates to pores or something mm -hmm. like that. And I also, in the very initial inkling of it, I, I always think of these relating so much more to touch, like this idea of like the implication of wanting to touch it um, and having these really present dots. Um, I don't know, I think it just, it does, it creates more of a relationship to the body and to touch. I had access to a digital camera and so that's what I kind of started playing around on. Um, when I started wanting to take photographs, but I wasn't satisfied with any of them. And I kind of was interested in it and I kept doing it. Um, but then a friend of mine lent me a camera and said, I think you would really like this film camera. You should try this out. And he loaded the film in. And the funny thing is he actually loaded it with slide film accidentally, because that's what he was using for an art project at the time. Um, and so it was this kind of thing where I took the photos and went to go get it developed and they said, do you want it cross-processed or do you want slides? And I had no idea. <laughs> so then it was just that kind of mistake and I said, I guess I just want negatives, so mm -hmm. process it this way. Um, and when it came back, it just had that kind of, it just has this eeriness to it. And most of them are like very green based on the one that I was using at that time and still use pretty frequently. I was more aware of current photographers who use a lot of digital processes and that I think when I first started taking photographs there was some itch to kind of make things 
analog, you know, and use, but I still don't have all of the techniques. Like I don't have photo filters and I don't have all of these things. So it's like, there's an interest in finding a way to create layers and kind of transparencies and collages, but physically instead of digitally. I don't set it up and only take one and I'm not very precise about it, as you can probably tell from the work. You know, like, there's a lot of searching and finding. Um, so I'll take like four images of one, trying different things each time I'm doing it to try and get what I'm looking for out of the image. I wind up still kind of collecting things, either finding them in like the wood shop where I have access, or um, sometimes I pick things up off the street. <laughs> so I guess that's like that's a thing that happens. Um, yeah, no, I know it's just always so funny when it's like you know if you're headed out somewhere and then you're like, oh, but I can't. I got to put this gross thing in my purse, and like you know it's just because it might make it into something. Um, those are always the times when I think, I hope I don't die today if someone sees this in my purse, you know, of all things. <laughs> 